It is exciting to know that Crossroads has a great board of directors, and I just we want you to meet one of those members. Dr. Carson Pugh, you've been with our board for eight years. Yes. Yeah, Skin I have, yeah. in the game. Yeah, a lot. Um, <laughs> a lot of, lot of transition, a lot of great things happening uh, in the course of that eight years, but um, it's something that I want to give my time to. Why? Why does Crossroads matter to you as a well, member of our board? I'm, I'm a pastor. I've served in churches for much of my life, and um, I love to have the good news of Jesus shared and Crossroads provides a pulpit in our country that no single church can match. And I know that it reaches people who actually would never come into the churches that I pastored. And so I want to have that platform available for people across the country. Well, thank you so much. Let's have a seat and have a visit because um, you're also the... Um you're not a pastor right now. You are a special nope. advisor to the president of Trinity Western University. Mm -hmm. But I got to know you when you were the president of Aero Leadership, yes. yeah. along yeah. with your wife, who became one of my besties yeah. and one of my yeah. great prayer partners, yeah. Brenda Pugh. Yeah. So we're here to talk about Brenda. Mm -hmm. And um, this second Christmas without Brenda isn't any easier, is it, Carson? No. Um, uh, the, the very shortly after Brenda passed through, I signed up and I, I joined a grief share group, which I would highly recommend for people who have lost a loved one. And uh, in the context of that, they were telling us, you'll hear lots of people tell you about the first year and the first birthday and the first anniversary and everything. But they said, the second and third years are harder. So, and I'm, I'm finding that. I think our family are finding that. Okay, Christmas mm -hmm. is, yeah. uh, and, and, and this really is very intentional mm -hmm. that we have you on now to talk yeah. with our audience who's going through Christmas with loss. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to want to show Brenda's book, But If Not, mm -hmm. uh, the, the wonderful journal she kept online for yeah. all of her friends like us who were in yeah. different parts of the country, and we were all reading from day yeah. 12. Mm -hmm what became an 18 month, very fast journey yeah. through the loss of cancer. Yeah. So let's go back to that New Year's Day. New Year's mm -hmm. Day, Yeah. you guys got a phone call. <laughs> yeah. And you wisely said to Brenda, do you remember how this all begins? Yeah, I do, I'll never forget it. The, um, uh, we had a phone message from our doctor on the phone and um, Brenda listened to it and he wanted her to come in the next day. So this would be January 2nd. And uh, she looked at me and she said, what could he be calling about? And I said, uh, I said to her, I don't know, but I think when your doctor calls you in the evening of New Year's Day, it's probably something serious. And she said, what could it be? And I said, I, I really don't know, but, um, but, but we, we certainly had our attention um, sort of shaken at that point, and it was a pretty quiet drive home. And it yeah. advances so quickly. She has, of course, a speaking engagement yeah. because that's the kind of Brenda Brenda yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And you went right from that ladies' speaking event. Yeah. All of the family of three sons yeah. you gathered, and tell us about the diagnosis. Yeah, we all crammed into um, uh, a doctor's office. She's a specialist in, uh, in respiratory stuff and lung cancer in particular, and, and she confirmed that Brenda had um, stage four lung cancer, which means it had already metastasized. It started in the lung, but but it had gone to her brain and to her uh, bones uh, in the lower back. And uh, it was, it, for our family, it was like somebody rolled a, a small scale nuclear device into our home. And um, it was uh, one, th those moments are, are some of uh, disbelief, of hearing hard things and and in the midst of it all, as I reflect back on it, I think Brenda handled it the best, you know. And you can't help but uh, wonder, you know, well, how long are we, like, no matter how it comes out, somebody's going to ask the question, how, how long are we talking, you know? 
um, because they had said it's terminal, meaning that this is going to take your life. And one of those doctors said June, like six Yeah, months? 150 days. Yeah. And in actual fact, uh, Brenda's response at that time was, she said, you don't number my days. <laughs> you can just picture her saying that, yeah. right? You don't number my days. Um, and Brenda actually lived for 588 days. And, um, and they, were, uh, just, they were just amazing days, actually. Okay, so let's just jump right to the mm -hmm. title of the book. Because yeah. you've taken her journal, mm -hmm. and you've hardly changed a word. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've just put no. this 588 days, which we were all mm. reading through that wonderful yep. website, yep. The Caring Bridge, yes. yep. adding a comments, prayers, we yep. were following mm -hmm. you through. Yeah, um, yeah. take well, us why it became so intentional. For well, um, right at the very beginning, like right after that diagnosis, um, the Lord said to Brenda, this isn't about you, it's about me. And she just she just grasped onto those words and that's when she started writing and she felt like this isn't about her it's for god and that you know her her blog grew to a hundred and thirty two thousand visitors uh, <laughs> like it was just you, know, you knew she had a lot of friends know, but yeah i know and i think that but. you know these are people from around the world and and she read the, your comments. You would write to her sometimes on there. She would, she would read those when she could. And um, that, was, that became her pulpit. That was her place to, to teach. And she teaches very honestly. Like she doesn't, she doesn't hide the times when she was a little fearful or scared or, or in pain. Um, and I think that that's why the journal resonates with so many people. It was just very real. And why did you give the journal the title, But If Not? Okay, But If Not. Um, one of my sons um, expressed uh, to mom, I just don't get it, you know. You have people around the world praying for your healing, and, um, and yet we don't see that. It's not being evidenced in the medical reports and uh, Brenda responded saying oh you know Jeremy God's gonna heal me and it was just given with such confidence and then she then she added I'd love it if it was here now in a physical way so that I could be with all of you but if not uh, and then she went on to, to say I'm gonna choose to trust God um, with this and she also shares in her journal about the passage of um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the book of and, Daniel. Yeah, in the book of Daniel. And that great phrase of, um, you know, being thrown into a fiery furnace. Um, but they served a God that could bring them out of there without their hair even being singed. And, um, but if not, they're still going to choose to trust him and they will not bow down to other gods. So. And so she mm -hmm. took that intentionality mm -hmm. through and 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 she um, even in her weakness she really guided mm -hmm. i'm choosing to walk through the cancer storm yeah. Yeah. with some real focus yes tell yeah. us about this oh we uh when we look back now uh, we just see intentionality written over everything that brenda did um how she spent her time who she spent her time with uh, how she spoke to us, how she guided us. Um, she left a lot of lists for us as a family. And um, I'm smiling only because it was just so Brenda. And she, <laughs> she instructed us. One of the things that she did was we found this list of, and it said, my communication plan. And it was a list of what we were to do after she died. And it was people that she specifically wanted us to go and tell. And the stories in the book about my two, two daughters, daughters-in-law, um, who went out. And it was uh, the dry cleaner, uh, the, the people at the coffee shop down the street, uh, the, the neighbors, one on each side and the, and the two neighbors behind our home. And she wanted all of these people to know and to be invited to her service. And... Uh, and the, <laughs> the manager of the Subway restaurant. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and you know what I've noticed in your whole mm. family is mm. you understand 
that God has a purpose for families. Mm -hmm. And so here you have a daughter-in-law coming to you and you're like, you're no slouch. You, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're quite an executive. You have a leadership company, but you need your daughter-in-law to come in on Sunday nights um, after yeah. Brenda's gone to say, yeah. Dad, what are you going to yeah. do this yeah. week? Mm -hmm. like, like you guys had to focus yeah. and get life intentionally yeah. back yes, in its true. very wounded, lost state. Yeah, uh, Kristen, especially early on, uh, was just really helpful doing exactly that. Dad, what are you going to do this next week? And, and you had to write it down and report to her. Well, I didn't have to re <laughs> report to her, but, you know, it helped give me structure. I think for, for those who are grieving, those who are on a grief journey, and, I'm, and you know, so many, many of our, in our audience. Yeah, many in our audience will, will be like that. Well, at the very beginning, it's like your legs get kicked out from under you and you're you're struggling to figure out how to walk. I love C.S. Lewis refers to it in Surprised by Joy. He said that um, if I if I had to have my appendix removed, I suppose it would be right if somebody said it's going to take time to heal. But he said, but when you lose your spouse, it's like having your leg amputated and you have to learn how to walk with an artificial leg. You know, so when it heals, he was saying it's just the stump that heals. Then you have to learn to walk with an artificial leg. And that metaphor actually really spoke to me because um, I think it captures how I was feeling. I had to learn how to walk again. I want to close with trust in God mm -hmm. now. You, um, yeah. you know, you are a pastor. That's, yeah. that's your background. And yeah. even though you work now in leadership issues, yeah. what if, what's God teaching you about trusting him? Yeah. Well, we went away on several family retreats um, to walk through this journey together. And uh, one of them was up at Barnabas, which you know on Keats Island. On and while Coast. we were there, um, our family were all together. We, the, the grandchildren were, are, are put to bed and the adult children are around uh, talking with Brenda. And I found myself getting angrier and angrier about the situation. It was just like, we should not be having this discussion. And Brenda was like the healthiest person on the planet. How could this be? And I had to excuse myself from the room. And I went into our bedroom and I yelled at God. I was so angry. Um, and in the midst of that, God spoke to me. And he, he interrupted my rant. <laughs> and he just said, Carson, calling, he called me by name, Carson, trust me. And uh, it just almost took my breath away. Because in the midst of it, I, I was sensing it's trust me, regardless of the outcome. And that became uh, kind of a new benchmark for me, Lorna, I think that we often we, we want to trust God when we're kind of confident of the outcome. But to trust him regardless of the outcome uh, is a big step into the unknown. And I'm trying to approach life like that now, of trusting him regardless of the outcome. Uh, Dr. Carson Pugh, mm -hmm. don't need to have all the answers. No. But you know you need to trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. And thank yeah. you for being on our board of directors. Thank you for Brenda's wonderful book, mm -hmm. But If Not. Thank yeah. you. So that's why we have the prayer lines. If you do not have um, family around you this Christmas, if you do not have the friendship and the intentionality that you need, let us help you with a prayer call today. 1-866-273-4444. Our gift to you, the body of Christ is around you this Christmas. Call those prayer lines. Thank you.